As the world's second largest country by land area, Canada is home to a diverse and dynamic economy that faces a range of challenges. From resource dependence to technological disruption, understanding Canada's economy is crucial for anyone interested in global commerce and finance. But what really are the issues faced by Canada's economy and is there a fix? Over the last 10 years, Canada's housing market has boomed, with house prices doubling due to consumer spending and government stimulus programs. These initiatives have led to low interest rates, prompting Canadians to take on debt for home purchases, but regrettably, still many have been unable to become homeowners. A recent Ipsos poll even reveals that 63% of non-homeowners have abandoned the dream of owning a house. The main factor behind this? Immigration. Immigration has heightened demand for rental properties as newcomers typically rent before contemplating a purchase. In Canada, the preference for housing investment is striking, accounting for 22% of national wealth while business investment contributes just 9.3% of GDP. This trend impacts job creation since business investment is essential for long-term economic growth by enhancing productivity through increasing the physical capital stock. Canadians are more risk-averse compared to Americans, which has led to lower domestic investment levels. This shortfall is compensated for by foreign direct investment, primarily from the United States, and many Canadian startups are acquired by foreign companies, especially American firms. Consequently, the Canadian economy is less productive and innovative than the U.S. The productivity gap is evident in average incomes, with Canadians earning about $60,000 per year compared to Americans' $80,000. The disparity arises from differences in capital intensity or the amount spent on machinery, tools, innovation, and capital per worker. Canadian businesses spend around $13,000 per worker on capital, while U.S. businesses spend around $20,500. On the bright side, income inequality in Canada is lower than in the U.S., as indicated by the Gini coefficient, a measure of income inequality. Despite this, Canada's economy ranks 14th out of 63 countries in the IMD World Competitiveness Ranking, remaining less competitive globally. In addition, according to the Conference Board of Canada, Canada's labor productivity growth has also been declining a few points gradually over the years. And while these very small differences in statistics may not seem significant, they can add up to ginormous effects in the long term. Historically, Canada has depended on its abundant natural resources for economic growth, discouraging investment in other sectors like manufacturing, research, and business activities. Natural resources contributed to 17% of nominal GDP and 51% of merchandise export value in 2021. However, oil and vehicle exports, the country's largest, are both experiencing declines. As resource-based exports dwindle, the services sector has grown significantly, with the financial services, real estate, and communications industries rapidly expanding. Toronto has emerged as a new financial hub in North America, and the Canadian banking system is one of the soundest globally and ranks first in the G7 for 11 consecutive years, thanks to prudent, well-regulated banks that avoid excessive competition. But despite its economic strength, Canada's growth has lagged behind other advanced economies and is predicted by the OECD to remain slow. One challenge is the brain drain phenomenon, with highly skilled individuals seeking opportunities abroad, particularly in the US. Canada has traditionally had fewer government initiatives promoting research and entrepreneurship, and if it wants to address brain drain and stimulate economic growth, the government should implement policies and incentives to retain top talent and foster innovation within the country. To achieve this, or simply diversify the economy and creating high-paying jobs, the country must promote investment in non-resource sectors like technology, manufacturing, and research. Strengthening support for small businesses and startups through tax incentives, grants, and mentorship programs can help cultivate a more dynamic entrepreneurial ecosystem. Investing in education and workforce development is vital for Canada's economic success, and this very much involves ensuring educational institutions produce graduates equipped with the necessary skills for the evolving job market. Partnerships between industry and academia can facilitate this process and increase innovation and competitiveness. Prioritizing research and increasing public and private R&D investment is also crucial for Canada's R&D spending legs among G7 countries, impacting productivity and competitiveness directly. Canada should also focus on infrastructure development, such as improved transportation, communication, and energy networks to enhance economic efficiency and productivity. Investing in green technology and sustainable infrastructure can help Canada address environmental challenges and tap into the growing market for clean energy solutions. Trade diversification is another strategy to strengthen the Canadian economy. By expanding trade relationships beyond the United States, Canada can reduce its vulnerability to economic fluctuations in its southern neighbor. 
Pursuing new trade agreements and fostering relationships with emerging economies can create new opportunities for Canadian businesses and provide additional sources of economic growth. In the end, while Canada is among the world's strongest economies, it faces challenges in remaining competitive and achieving robust growth. To overcome these obstacles, the country must concentrate on fostering innovation, promoting investment in non-resource sectors, retaining top talent, and investing in infrastructure and education for adopting a multifaceted approach can unlock Canada's full potential and ensure a prosperous future for its citizens. What other policies should Canada adopt? Tell us in the comments below. This brings us to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing you more content like this. See you next time.